Hello and welcome to yet another YouTube video here on this channel. We are diving into this new app called Sublime and this is a different kind of a uh, second brain application. Imagine a second brain application with uh, a blend of social media and Pinterest, everything together in one big blend. Uh, that's what this uh, feels like and it is very different so in order to understand the use cases of this we first have to uh, talk about the philosophy behind this application so every idea here is cards um, so everything you write inside of the application is written inside of these cards they have a kindle um uh, Kindle integration that allows you to import your Kindle highlights like I've done here but in addition to these cards you also have collections uh, so you have both collections and you have cards and one card can live in multiple uh, collection the idea here uh, or the philosophy behind this there are actually multiple things but the first and probably the most important one is that uh, the app or the ideas you put inside of the app is like building blocks. So they believe that um, ideas are just like Lego blocks and you can put them together and build on top of your existing ideas with new ones or you could move uh, your Lego block from one collection to another or have it in multiple collections in order to create your next great idea. That's uh, the philosophy behind this application and you can curate a lot uh, during your day when you're reading through articles, books, you have shower thoughts, you come across something on Twitter which is now X, I seem to forget that all the time, but you came, uh, come across a great idea on X or an image you want to save, you can do all of that in here and you can curate your own uh, knowledge base and you can add them into different collections and as I said one um, card can live in multiple different collections and what I have been thinking about these collections is that there are several ways to use them one is this reminders for myself which is just to remind myself of the things that matter to me but there is also one other thing I think could be cool in an application like this and that is to use uh, your collections based off emotions or even better based off thought uh, provoking questions so uh, for example will AI kill our creativity could be a collection and I could gather everything around that topic in that uh, set collection that is one uh, use case I think would be really cool inside of uh, this application especially if you uh, write or you post uh, content on social media the ideas for your posts for example in my case a medium post about AI and how it can uh, destroy I our creativity could be the name of the collection and I could start curating things inside of there and going through my library to find things but now uh, we have understood the basic philosophy behind this or the first part at least the second part is that not only does your knowledge compound if you put all of your knowledge into one place and you can uh, use your own knowledge as building blocks but what if we could create a shared graph with everyone else that is using the application and you could start to build with other people's ideas and uh, connect them together and uh, start building your own uh, I like to call it Lego house uh, with these ideas so build your own Lego house using both your own ideas and others uh, and that is something an idea that I really resonate with and I think is really cool uh, and I have seen uh, this social aspect inside of note-taking apps 
been done before. Tuz has it as well, uh, not to the extent of Sublime, but it has uh, the same abilities as uh, Sublime has. Uh, so Tuz and Sublime are similar in that way. But now we have covered the two main aspects of the philosophy behind uh, uh, behind Sublime. Now let's take a look at some of the features. As I've said, the building blocks are cards and uh, also collections. But apart from that, you uh, can actually uh, follow people. So you can follow people to see uh, their uh, collections, their public collections, and not everything needs to be public. You can see that these right here are private while this reminders for myself is um, uh, is uh, public and how I think about this is that whenever an idea is really new it is still fragile I'm still scared of sharing it but once it starts to come together and I'm well underway uh, in developing that idea I wouldn't wouldn't have a problem actually sharing it with everyone. That's how I would think about something like this. And that is how I've used tools in the past uh, as well. Um, so that's my thoughts behind how I would share my collections. But it also relies heavily on search. When you have a sort of a timeline view like this, and you can shuffle the view if you wanted to, but when, when you have a view like this, you actually have to rely on search to find things. Uh, so uh, it has a basic search, and I can just search for creativity, and it will give me everything about creativity using keywords but I could also search for what makes us creative so what makes us creative uh, and I will search for this but I will turn this into a smart search and it uh, shows me a bunch of things uh, because I read this book right here which has a lot of the answers to my question but like this one is a really good one looking for a solution to a creative problem so what makes us creative is uh, can be finding solutions to a creative problem so this search inside of here is actually really good the smart search is really really good and that is something that is really important in an application like this where you have the timeline view it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that a lot of the other pkm applications uh, have but it doesn't want to have them either it wants to be a simple place where you you can just gather your thoughts, uh, ideas, and things you find online. So everything that resonates with you, you can capture uh, through their web clipper. They also have an iOS application, which I've played a little bit around with, but not too much. But just as an example, I can uh, right click here and I can add this to Sublime. So we can add a note, note here, we can add it to a collection. So let's say I wanted a new collection called Running. I could actually add that. I could add a description and pin that to my sidebar or make it private. But I won't do that right now. And I have also hit the limit of two private collections. But I will just create this and I will add this to my library. And it is now added to my library. Now let's go ahead and reload this and it appears right here. Uh, and it is inside of my running uh, collection. But there is one other thing about this application. So uh, I can press something I've uh, highlighted myself or something I've found, an idea, a spark, and I can press C related cards. Here I can actually see what everyone else have uh, added to the platform. Uh, these are all public cards that other people have actually added. And I can go down this rabbit hole of an idea until I am happy. So uh, here uh, is something about running, even more about running. And I can just continuously go down this rabbit hole, press C related cards and just continue to go down this path that is also a really cool feature that a lot of applications do not have having the ability to have an engine 
help you uh, find connections between your notes, your ideas is actually something that I know a lot of people would enjoy. But as I said, this application is different. So uh, if you're used to things like Obsidian, Rome Research, uh, things like Tooze, even My Mind, uh, this will work differently because you can't have things like to do's in here. You can't, or at least I wouldn't use this to remember things like gift ideas for family and friends. This is just for ideas that I want to do something with, write something about or post a YouTube video about. That's mainly uh, how I see the use case of this application. So if you are going to use this, you will probably need a second note taking app for day to day maintenance for uh, your to do list if you're not using a to do application. Um, so. You will need multiple applications. This cannot be your all-in-one solution. This is mainly for your ideas and connecting your ideas together and finding new ideas to build on top of the creative spark you have, you have had. Uh, but I think that it is a really cool application. There is, of course, more to it than I am able to uh, show in a short video like this, but uh, it is worth a try. And the pricing of this a little different from uh, the other applications I've seen. So you can choose to pay other either 50, 75, 100, 150 or 200. And they also have lifetime plans coming in from 300 all the way up to a thousand dollars. So pretty good on the pricing. $50 isn't too much, uh, but it is really early days for the application. Again, I haven't tested it enough to see whether or not it has any major bugs, but I haven't encountered anyone, at least not yet. And they are uh, developing this quite slowly. They are going slow and making sure that everything works properly until they uh, before they onboard new people into the application. So uh, overall, I would say that uh, it is looking like a really cool application. I'm not sure if I would use this as one of my note-taking apps, probably because I already have way too many and uh, I am happy with the ones I'm using and I can't, I just can't move uh, note-taking apps. I don't have the energy for it. But if you're looking for something new, this might be the application for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will try to get to them as soon as I can. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video.